The announcement of Sora, OpenAI's new tool that can generate realistic, lifelike videos from simple text prompts, rocked the world. And recently, Joanna Stern of The Wall Street Journal sat down with OpenAI's CTO and asked the tough questions about Sora, like this. What data was used to train Sora? And the answer we got wasn't reassuring. We used publicly available data and licensed data. What does public data mean exactly? Thankfully, Joanna pressed on and asked all the right questions like, does that mean YouTube? Facebook, Instagram, and the answer we got, well, wasn't great. I'm actually not sure about that. You know, if they were publicly available, um, available, yeah, publicly available to use, um, there might be the data, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not confident about it. There's just so much wrong with that answer. Let's get into it. Sora is a new AI tool that can generate videos that look incredibly real. Yes, it has flaws like continuity issues, but even still, this is a first generation of the product. It's already good enough to fool people who aren't specifically looking for AI videos, and it's only going to get better. When I covered this previously, I mentioned that at the rate AI is progressing, we're going to need a universal basic income, which some people disagreed with strenuously. But another important question is, just what data did OpenAI use to train Sora? Most generative AI essentially learns through observation. Want a chatbot that can write a book? Feed it lots of books. Need a bot to make videos? Feed it lots of videos. And I do mean a lot of videos. And that's why Joanna Stern asked the important question, what videos did OpenAI use exactly? And let's get one thing straight. The fact that the CTO of OpenAI couldn't confidently answer that question isn't great. She may have played this off as not wanting to share those details, which has its own set of problems, but she started off with an answer suggesting she didn't even know for certain what the answer was. When pressed if that data included YouTube and Facebook and Instagram videos, she basically admitted the answer is likely yes. And what she said is a real problem. Just because someone posts a video publicly to view doesn't mean they've given anyone permission to use it to train AI. Think about it. YouTube and Facebook have been around since long before AI generating videos was a thought in anyone's mind. So how could they have possibly thought to themselves, boy, I hope this video of my child blowing a candle on a birthday cake is someday used to train an AI to make videos of children. By the way, if you enjoy tech reviews and hearing about tech news, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I'll be reviewing a smart grill soon, along with a mini lightsaber and telling you how to spring clean your smart home. Hit that subscribe button to hear more. But look, the situation is ridiculous. You may as well argue that just because an artist put a newly created painting in a museum, they have given permission for robots to make copies of it, juggle the colors a little bit, and sell it as something original. If a human did that, we'd call it a copyright violation. Unfortunately, this isn't the problem with just Sora, nor is it legally clear what's okay here. Take Google, for instance. It's a search engine we all know and use because it feels like the alternatives aren't any better. But the search engine's mandate has changed a lot since its first launch. In the beginning, the whole point of Googling something was so you could find a knowledgeable site to give you information you need. If you wanted to know how to fix a water heater, you'd search and Google would point you to a reliable, reputable site with the answer. A place where humans put effort into creating content that hopefully your visit would help pay for, whether through ads or sales. But now, Google's mandate is no longer to get you to other places on the web. Google's mandate is to keep you on Google. And that's done by stealing content. For years now, if you Googled a question, right above the links would be a snippet with the answer you needed. Sure, that sounds more convenient. You don't have to click through. But where did Google get that text? By copying and pasting it from some site. That's stealing, no matter how you slice it. Arguably, snippets could lead to people clicking through when the information wasn't complete, but things are worse now. Now when you Google something, the company's AI provides a complete and thorough answer. And did a Google expert create this content? No. The AI was trained on other people's hard work and it just reformats it. It's not really any different than our robot painter example. And Google's AI doesn't even always provide sources on where its info comes from. The goal here is to keep you on Google and off other sites by using the hard work of other people from those sites and not paying them for it. But what outcome will that lead to? With Google Gemini and Sora and other AI stealing other people's hard work to create content, what even is the incentive to make anything anymore? 
You might say fun, but fun doesn't pay the bills. And when content creators quit creating because they have to work other jobs instead, we end up looking at a world where the only content AI can train from is content created by AI. We won't know what's real anymore, and we won't have humans creating anything anymore. And that's a future I don't think any of us want. Remember, just because you've made something publicly available to view doesn't mean you've made it available to use. And we need to address that fact head on. Our courts need to tackle these hard questions or people will stop creating and the world will be worse for it. That's all for now, but stay tuned for more tech news and reviews. And if you wanna see the full interview with Joanna Stern and OpenAI CTO, I've got it linked down below. Until next time, bye.